Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and I'm going to try something a little bit different today. So uh, I watch a lot of the new releases but I don't always get to write full reviews and then actually make the video because that just takes so much time. So I thought that I might start doing some mini reviews where I can say what I thought about the movie but it's just not going to be as detailed as my normal reviews but it will let you know, you know, whether I liked it or not. So for today I'm going to start off with Spider-Man Homecoming, Atomic Blonde, and Baby Driver. So starting off with Spider-Man Homecoming, I really liked this movie. I thought Tom Holland was great in it, uh, so much better than Andrew Garfield. He had the right sense of humor and youth and vibrancy and uh, to me he was the best thing about the film. Uh, I really liked that retro throwback feel where it felt like the 80s. Uh, it had sort of that John Hughes feeling. My favorite part was uh, when he's running through the yards and it's reminiscent of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That was so much fun. But I felt like the movie could have gone maybe a little bit further with these 80s references and that's a criticism I have with some of these Marvel movies. They go in a different direction and I love that but sometimes I wish it went a little bit further in that direction. Um, the villain is good, Michael Keaton's good in it, uh, but you know, maybe not as well fleshed out. Also, the kind of reveal you get with him, nah, I wasn't crazy about it. But overall, this was a really enjoyable movie. And so, in terms of filmic uh, aspects and artistry, I would give Spider-Man Homecoming a B, and in terms of watchability, I would give it a B plus. I definitely enjoyed it. I'm glad I watched it. It's not my favorite of all of the Marvel movies, but I really think that Tom Holland is perfectly cast. Uh, next up is Atomic Blonde starring Charlize Theron and James McAvoy. And if you saw the other video about the Blu-ray releases, I was so excited to see this movie and it just didn't totally live up to my expectations. It was shot beautifully, visually, it was just so appealing. I loved the colors and how it was all of these neon lights and the way uh, that it was shot at night especially. But this the story was good, it was okay, but I just couldn't get past Charlize Theron and her accent. I couldn't believe how horrible her British accent was in the movie. And I also found the movie to be somewhat predictable, actually very predictable. My husband and I, I definitely figured the movie out pretty early on, uh, which is never a really good sign. Uh, but the one highlight to me was James McAvoy. Uh, I just really like him. He's so engaging and personable and, uh, you know, no matter what he's in, I just always seem to like his performance in it. Uh, the music was really cool. I definitely liked a lot of aspects. I just thought it could have been a little bit more intricately written uh, and had a bit more symbolism, but it's certainly uh, an interesting start and they set it up where there could be sequels in the future. I just hope that Charlize Theron gets a different dialect coach because that was a mess. Uh, so in terms of film and artistry, I would give Atomic Blonde a C plus, and then in terms of watchability, I would give it a B minus. It was okay. It was not great, but if you're bored and you want to watch something that looks cool, this certainly looks cool. Uh, and then the last movie is Baby Driver, and that stars Ansel Eggert uh, and also Kevin Spacey, which was actually a problem for me, and I'll get to that in a second. And you know, I wanted to like this movie and I did kind of enjoy it but it was well made for some reason it just didn't sit right with me now uh, it was definitely well paced I loved the editing was incredible the way the music really went with every action and it felt like you were going on this roller coaster that just never stopped but what I couldn't stop thinking about is the fact that it was such a similar storyline to drive which is clearly the far superior film and you know I know that the tone and the intent is just totally different with Baby Driver 
but you know it had such an emphasis on you know that introspective quiet driver and the music meaning so much to him and this kind of heist and ghetto I, I just it was too similar for me and I did really like Ansel Eggert in it uh, I loved Lily James she's just such a great young actress and just seeing John Hamm just looking like that was so much fun it was watch it it was worth it just for me to watch John Hamm in this movie um, but the action scenes were great, the chase scenes were fantastic, uh, it was funny, but I was also really distracted by watching Kevin Spacey. I felt like he really phoned in this performance, and then with all of these allegations on top of it, I, I really couldn't get that out of my head. And I know there are going to be some people who will say you need to separate what's going on in someone's personal life, but it's just so fresh and it's so disturbing that it was really difficult for me to watch this movie without thinking well what what went on on the set when John Berthal said he was a terrible person and he was a bully and I just couldn't get these things out of my head so this is one of the rare occurrences where I actually will give a higher grade for the film and artistry rather than watchability. So for Baby Driver Film and Artistry, I would give it a B. Uh, I thought it was very well made. The story is a little bit light. It's a little bit superficial, but it's definitely a cool exercise in editing. It kind of felt like all style, no substance to me. But in terms of watchability, I would give Baby Driver a C. I just didn't particularly enjoy watching this movie. I could appreciate it, uh, but like I said, there were just too many pitfalls, and not just Kevin Spacey, that I didn't totally get, you know, immersed in this world that you're supposed to be in for whatever reason. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you've seen any of these movies, just leave a comment below uh, and you guys can start talking to each other about what you've seen and what you like and I'll add in my two cents as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and remember it is always in fashion to stay in, get dressed up, and make it a cinema chic night. Bye everyone.